I'm ready to show the peeler. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, and then we can do more Q and A after that. It's kind of like the one of the last step along the way. So this machine that you see here, this is a this is a unique machine. You won't find one of these anywhere else. This is a Greg Miller invention. Um, you know, uh, I think um, you know this, this is a prototype model. There's ideas that we have to improve on this, but it works really well for what it is. So this will take these dried uh, chestnuts. You know, they're the ones that are fully dry. Like if you saw them out in the, in the bin, these ones that are fully dry. And um, it will it will peel them. There's a couple of bad ones in there. So what this does, this is a uh, we have a hopper here that's warmed a little bit and uh, has a fan blowing through it. Uh, we have this big long tube. The tube ends. There's a board here, and then a big suction fan at the top of that column of the pipe up there. So that that suction fan, and this is all airtight, uh, creates a lot of pressure. It pulls the nuts really rapidly through this tube. So this is an impact peeler. So basically the nuts shoot through the tube like a rifle, crack against that bang board, the shell shatters, the, the shells get sucked up and blown outside, and the whole and the kernels, which are heavier, come down on the table. And there's a um, we're here with an airlock release that lets them come down on the roller table, and then we, we can grade them out, pick out the ones that are fit for our flour. Or ones that we reject. So I'm going to demonstrate this machine. Um, I'll warn you that the nuts that we have in here are, they're pretty old, they're not in very good shape. So I'm using them for demonstration purposes, but these are not representative of like what we actually would uh, be selling because they're going to be, yeah, they're going to be kind of gross, but you'll at least be able to see the process by which we do this. We don't, uh, since we just started harvesting this year, we don't have this year's crop ready to put through this machine, but I wanted you to be able to see how this works. Alright, and that's where the... Also, this is loud. So we were going to do this in November, December, January, and for this year's crop, these were just like the leftover nuts that we were going to throw away. We were working with them. come out in kind of this whole kernel, uh, you know, condition. So they're actually, you know, we could sell these either as uh, whole dried kernels or or we could put turn these into flour. A lot of ones that are broken, we can we can still use those for flour if, if they're good quality. Um, and then a lot of these little tiny pieces, we we just let them go. 
Um, getting them to the, the optimal dryness is really tricky, so where they're dry enough to, to peel, uh, but not so dry, like some of these are so dry that they're just shattering, right? We have a lot of these really tiny little pieces, which is not a great sign, like uh, this is not um, optimal. <laughs> you know, optimal is, you know, so mostly whole kernels, but uh, may and maybe some bigger, bigger chunks, but not all of these tiny little pieces. But at least you can see kind of how the, how the process works. Now, like, do you have some method of measuring the dryness or working on it or like, like in the drying bins or anything like that? Yeah, so we, um, it's mostly sensory. Mm -hmm. So with the, well, with the drying bins, you, you just know basically as long as the kernel is dry enough that it shrinks in from the shell, mm -hmm. it can be run through this machine. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing would be uh, getting them dry enough to actually run through the mill. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, uh, that's its own separate thing. So after we roll them across the table here, we will then put them in an oven, like there's that red drying oven over there. And so uh, we'll finish drying them and also roast them in that oven. We, we've determined that there's, there's some optimal you know, temperatures and times where you roast them at a certain temperature to a certain amount of time and they just taste a lot better as flour. And so we'll roast them and finish drying them in there to the point where they're dry enough to run through the flour mill.